Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Cyril Ramaphosa's Sona address struck a business-friendly tone, but still did not receive overwhelming support from business. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi, Terence. No. no new promises, but was there any hint of movement on the reform agenda? Yes, I think it was important that there were no new promises. I think uh, there's a bit of fatigue around promises, and then there's a lack of implementation thereafter. So the president very much stuck to what's in the economic reconstruction and recovery plan and the priorities outlined in the last SONA around getting more electricity into the system. Uh, we know we just come out of another bout of load shedding, about getting infrastructure going, about getting this auction of uh, spectrum eventually underway. So it was about sort of giving some sort of heads up on progress that's being made uh, around that um, electricity, as we know, that's been very slow in getting new electricity into the system. There's been a real lack of urgency. Uh, we've had this very long period uh, of non-procurement of renewables, really precipitated by uh, then captured Eskom saying that we don't need new uh, electricity because they had enough in the system. And now we are at the period point where we're having the most intensive period of load shedding in our history. We're seeing some hints of movement there. I think also an important signal that the risk mitigation program, which was supposed to close this, immer this immediate gap, uh, which the president said is 4,000 megawatts, I think it's more likely closer to 6,000 megawatts, but be that as it may, of 2,000 megawatts through the risk mitigation program, saying that only 800 of that is ready to be signed. So we must assume, I think, at the 1,200 megawatts of car power ship are not ready to sign. We know that they've had legal issues around. We uh, know that there's environmental uh, uh, concerns and they haven't got a record of decision there, uh, authorization to go ahead. We know that the ports authority is nervous about where these ships are going to be located and whether they're going to sterilize place. We know that Eskom's concerned about the gas pricing regime around that. So saying that there's going to be 800 megawatts we must assume that it's the non coal power ship projects that will sign soon and hopefully there'll be some shovels in the ground. Those are going to be very expensive ele electrons coming into the system for the next 20 years, but at least probably some movement. And then uh, saying that we, we're going to get this 2,600 megawatts from bid window 5 in, into a st uh, state of uh, closure um, and then get launched the next round of renewables. And then I think emphasizing this um, role of embedded generation, some 4,000 megawatts he's speculating could come on there. Uh, so there were some interesting announcements or indications of movement, as well as the, uh, the uh, release of the new Electricity Regulation Act for public comment uh, that's now just come out, and that's really about setting up this uh, electricity system for the future. So I think those are important signs of movement, also that there's going to be eventually this auction process coming out um, for broadband spectrum in the next couple of months. And then, uh, you know, Transnet getting some private sector support. He could point to uh, reforms uh, that, are, that progress was being made um, uh, throughout the speech, but didn't make any new province promises or big bang announcements, uh, which uh, I think in some ways uh, is quite important. I think we need to focus on the implementation of what we've already committed to. The role of the private sector was emphasised throughout. Yes, I think uh, this was a, a big point of contention uh, and support, you know, from the Democratic Alliance, John Stiernes, and saying that he's delighted at last a ANC president is acknowledging that only the private sector can drive growth and job creation, to Julius Malema's uh, response to say, well, this is now outsourcing government's role in creating jobs. But, it's, uh, but I think it was an important signal. We know of the state capture, the corruption, the inefficiency in the state, throwing lots of money and resources at, the, at government and government projects is not going to deliver the results. Uh, more and more, uh, Surah Posa is going to have to rely on the private sector resources, their governance processes, that are cleaner, it seems, than government, and the ability to implement. Uh, so I think there was this continual olive branch given to the private sector, and also signals that we need to get a more business-friendly environment. Uh, pointing Sipo and Corsi, well-known uh, 
at, in the business circles, being a former CEO of Exara, to lead a commission or t a task team to cut red tape. Now that you could argue should be done anyway as a matter of course by the small business department and by DTR but it hasn't been done so some emphasis there from the presidency uh, then this sort of review of the labor market um, policies or regulations that seem to be impeding small business that's important signal getting movement on the hemp and cannabis industry which uh, I think has a lot of job creation potential so th these sort of a number of uh, and signals and then stating quite clearly that um, Transnet needs help. I mean basically saying Transnet needs help at Kucha as well as at Durban with its port terminals and saying there will be a, some firm movement on that with private sector uh, partnerships by October this year. That's also an important signal to business that uh, this administration wants to be, wants to lean more and more on the private sector. Uh, as well as the fact that we're going to open slots on our most important freight corridor between City Deep and uh, Durban. Uh, at the moment it's basically now run by road hauliers. Uh, the rail system is not carrying the freight that it should and it has been uh, was initially designed to carry. And maybe opening slots to the private sector on that corridor will see that we can have some shift uh, to, to rail from road. But uh, at the moment, it's really dominated by road, and thank goodness for that, because otherwise we would just be without uh, that key logistics corridor moving. So, but I think on the whole, uh, trying to say I'm, I'm really open to private sector support, and see the importance of private sector in this economy now, particularly now, where the, the government uh, departments are not really in a position financially, skills-wise, uh, as well as from a governance perspective to deliver uh, quickly and cleanly. The reaction from some business sections has been circumspect. Yes, I think <coughs> because this overall um, discussion is now framed by building another new consensus, I think there's a lot of fatigue. You know, the, the uh, economic uh, reconstruction and recovery plan was, was an outcome of consensus building. Now we have another 100 days for the social partners to build consensus again around the economic recovery plan um, because we're not going to move away from that program. That remains the core program. It's going to be a discussion around what trade-offs the different social partners need to make around getting that implemented. So I think there's a lot of fatigue around that and really why can't we just implement now? But I think it's really an attempt by the president to reset the reset. So the, the, e, the ERRP was a reset of trying to bring in more private sector uh, into the, the, the infrastructure rollout, etc. And uh, that reset hasn't really gained the traction it should have, possibly partly because of the pandemic. But really, I think there's just, uh, there's been a lack of um, energy and implementation. So I think it's really about reigniting uh, the social compact rather than forming a new social compact and reigniting the, the uh, the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. But I can understand why business is saying that we've done that, we've been there, done that, we've worn the T-shirt, <laughs> it's already faded and it's been through the washing machine. You know, we need, we need to have real implementation here, but I think that is really the message. I need the private sector. Uh, I'm going to rely on the private sector more and more, even in the presidency, you can see the appointment Sipo and Corsi, uh, the former Reserve Bank de Deputy Governor to run the climate finance uh, negotiations with the developed countries that have offered 8.5 billion. So to lean on that more and more, given the context of a divided cabinet, it seems, uh, given the context of trying to say the right things, even though they're not popular at the moment, uh, uh, given the backdrop of a, an ANC elective conference at the end of the year, I think this is the way the president sees trying to get some movement in a very, very difficult political year for him. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.